Sir, I accept your challenge. Um, one of the biggest mistakes that I hear people who don't believe in evolution make is that they think that something on the tree of evolution is going to jump from one branch to another branch, and that's simply not how that happens. Um, so what I'm going to do is try and explain that portion of evolution because, let's face it, I've only got 10 minutes and I've already used up a half of one of them. So I'm going to have to do the, uh, the short version of something to at least clear up that misunderstanding. Let's say, for example, we have an animal. And this animal has four legs, um, hooven at the bottom, and um, uh, eats uh, plant life in order to survive. And... Uh, and let's say this uh, this animal looks a lot like a, I don't want to say dog, I don't want to say horse, I don't want to say something that exists because then you're going to think, oh well, see that never happened. Let's you know, let's call it what it is. Let's let's just call it a four-legged plant eater, four-legged plant eater, um, a flippy, um, flep, flappy, f f l e. We'll borrow the e from the leg, four-legged plant eater, f l e p e, flippy. Um, so the fleepy um, has uh, has to survive in the wild. Of course, there's a lot of predators out there that are coming after him too, so he has to be able to get away. So the longer his legs are and the faster that he can run, the more he's going to be able to survive. Now, some the big, long, stocky legs that he's walking around with right now aren't going to do him any good, uh, and they're not going to go away. But let's say that this, this fleepy has um, three children. And these three children, um, two of them have slightly more narrow legs than, um, well, let's go with an uh, even number. Two have a uh, little bit more narrow legs, and the other two have um, the same thick legs that um, their, their parents do. The two with the, the more slender, longer legs uh, are able to outrun predators more, uh, more easily, and so therefore they will survive versus the two short-legged. Now they go breed with two other short-legged, and now you have a dominant and recessive gene. One of the two is going to become prominent. Now, if that prominent gene becomes the long, slender legs that allows them to run faster, then they will reproduce more of those than the other. The smaller amount will get eliminated versus the large amount, and they'll be able to continue their species more easily. Okay? If the reverse happens and it becomes a recessive gene, they're going to have a harder time, but not impossible, for those long, slender legs to, to make it through. Um, now, let's uh, forget about the predators for just a moment. Let's talk about eating. They're going to have to eat. Well, unfortunately for our Fleepy, he lives in the uh, African uh, uh, desert, and so there's not a whole lot of grass around. So the only vegetation that he can eat are going to be the leaves off of trees. So he reaches his neck up and he eats the leaves off of trees. Well, there's you know only so many trees around, and there's only so many leaves down on the bottom half of the tree. So in order for our Fleepy to really survive, he also needs to have, uh, you know, to have those long, slender legs. They help him because it makes him taller. Um, the more, you know, lengthy his neck is, may also possibly uh, save him from uh, uh, starvation. So, you know, as he has children, um, and uh, and then another generation of children, and then another generation of children, and let's say that there's uh, over the course of these, uh, uh, over the course of a, a few generations. The, our original Fleepy has um, uh, 40 great-grandchildren, okay? And of the 40 great-grandchildren, um, 20 of them have the long, slender legs and also have a little bit longer neck than the others. And so it's able to uh, run away faster and eat more than the other 20. Well, the other 20 are probably going to die either from starvation or being captured by the uh, predators. So they die off and they don't get to reproduce. Meanwhile, the other, the the new version of the Fleepy, um, and uh, and since they have a, a longer neck, we're going to add the neck, and then we'll call them Fleepins. Okay, so now we have Fleepins because they're four-legged plant eaters with uh, with long necks. We'll leave the long out just because you know, hey, it's my story. I can do what I want to. So we're going to call them Fleepins now. So now we have Fleepins who have longer necks and more slender narrow. Uh, the more slender legs that can help them get away a little bit faster and they're taller too so again it helps them uh, get more vegetation well the more children that these uh, these fleepin have that have even longer necks and even longer more slender legs allows them you know to be even more successful so the more that they can do this the more that they are going to be able to get away from the predators that are after them and the more leaves they can eat to avoid starvation 
Um, eventually, they have very long necks. So, um, you know, they they uh, they start looking even more and more odd. But then there's a, a new category that's thrown in. Since we are out in the desert, those who are solid colors stand out, especially those who are some kind of a uh, you know a uh, a bold look. Let's say that they're just like solid black or whatever. They they'll stand out because they're so tall with these really long necks, and so they'll stand out and easily be picked out by predators. They can't really hide. So those who are more of an earth tone color, they maybe have a few few spots on them and different markings that allow them to hide. Uh, over generations, as uh, again, let's say that there's a, a new um, new batch of, uh, of fleepins now who are out, and since again you had you started with instead of starting with one, we started with 20. Now there's uh, there's 400 fleepins out there, and of the 400 fleepins, um, a hundred have very long necks and have um, uh, and and have uh, funny looking marks all over. Well, since they're kind of funny looking with their long necks and their markings, we're gonna call them giggles. Um, completely new name because they're just so so much so much more different than their original ancestor of the fleepy. Okay, so since the fleepy uh, you know didn't have the long neck, didn't have the the long you know narrow legs, uh, and didn't have markings, he he looks nothing like his great 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 grandchildren um, who have now evolved on to become more um, unique on this side okay so you know and we're now going to call them giggles and these giggles um, you know they they continue to to grow even longer and longer necks because that just seems to benefit them more and the longer their necks are the more they can eat the the leaves off of the the trees um, the taller that they are they can you know um, they have the long legs which allows them to get away a little bit faster because they they can you know they don't have to run you know their legs don't have to move any faster because the long legs can take longer strides, and with the uh, the colorful the, uh, the the markings that they have, they're able to hide in the um, in the trees and in the bushes and everything else to uh, to avoid predators. Um, you know, I'm calling them giggles, and I don't think you know anyone with half a brain has figured out that this isn't a giggle; it's a giraffe. Um, so there, there that shows how these things have have changed over time. Now let's let's go the other way though. Let's go back to our original flip, um, uh, Flippy, and let's say that um, half of his children started started going in the direction of the flipping, and the other half went a different direction. And, you know, they were all like you know black with uh, you know uh, some were solid black, some were solid white, and um, instead of getting the longer, leaner legs. Um, they got stockier legs, which allowed them to be more powerful, so that they could kick stronger to defend themselves instead of run away. And let's say that they, um, you know, and that also because of the more powerful legs, they were able to run faster, even though they weren't taller. Um, and these went on to, you know, go generation after generation. Again, you have the, you know, great grandchildren who are this way, and then there's, you know, another series of great grandchildren who are a different way, and the ones who survive, you know, go on in a different. Uh, different aspect and um, again I'm trying to fast forward here because I'm running out of time but I mean this is like a this is something that would need to take many many hours of um, of a, a discussion to really get you to understand it um, you really should just read a book on the subject but l let's say that the you know the, the the giggles on the other side found a way to adapt a different way they, they were able to eat um, the leaves of the trees but this other version is able to run further and um, and they got a different type of marker. Since they're not as tall, they can't hide up in the trees with the spots all over them. Instead, they need they need more of a, a grass-like uh, camouflage. And some were spotty, and some were patchy, and others were kind of stripy. And the stripy ones were able to survive where the others didn't. Well, instead of turning into a giggle, they turn into a stripy bot, or as you may know them today, a giraffe. Now, is that how giraffes and zebras came about? No, but you can see how a common ancestor, well I say no, it could be, I don't know, I didn't dig that part up, but you can see how a common ancestor can create two different species. A zebra's not going to give birth to a giraffe, it's only going to give birth to now a more specific type of zebra, and you might end up calling it something else down the road. But for now, we call them zebras and giraffes. I hope that clears it up.